Hey, Canyon Lake, and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Brett, and I'm so glad uh, to be here with each and every one of you today. Just a reminder that today is Communion Sunday, and so this would be a great time for you to go and grab your elements, uh, bread or juice or crackers or whatever you have on hand today. After the message, uh, Pastor Dan will lead us in a time of sharing in communion with one another. And, and friends, as we enter into this time of, of worship today, together, I know that it can often feel like we're being pulled in so many different directions, uh, and we want to have a sort of clear path of where to go next. And so today, uh, during this time, I just invite us to listen deeply for the voice of Christ in our midst, that we might dare to be the ones who hear and who follow our amazing God. So y'all, let's go ahead and turn our hearts and our minds uh, toward worship. We'll begin in song. There's got to be more than going back and forth From doing right to doing wrong Cause we were taught that's who we are Come on, get in line right behind Along with everybody, thinking this worth than what you do. Feel like a hero who takes the stage when we're on the edge of our seats, saying it's too late. But let me introduce you to Amazing Grace. No matter the bonds, no matter the Thanks so much uh, for that amazing music. And, and y'all, let's now turn our hearts toward prayer as we pray together. Ever calling God, we give you thanks that you have gathered us into your church and graced us with your faithful presence. We ponder our history, ancient and still developing, and marvel at the many expressions of your church. 
Grant us the vision to be a part of a season for the church that, that we pray will bring ever more joy and justice to the world. Continue to gather us, the diverse lot of us, into Jesus's vision and dream that your people may be one in you. Amen. And now, friends, let's go ahead and send it to Miss Erin uh, for today's children's message. Hi, hi, Canyon Lake family. Today is Pentecost, and today is the day that we celebrate when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit down to earth to be with the disciples. It came with a rush of wind, and it touched each disciple on the head with a flame. And after that, all the disciples could speak all the languages so that they could tell everybody the good news of God's love. Pretty cool, right? Isn't it neat that there was a fire that touched them, but it didn't burn them? That's because it was the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit, you say? Have you ever heard somebody say, God the parent, God the son, God the Holy Spirit? How can God be all three things? Well, honestly, this is a really hard concept. But a wise person once told me that our God, being three in one, we call the Trinity, is kind of like the stages of water. This is water, right? Of course. But we know that water doesn't always have to be liquid. If we freeze it, it can be a solid. And if we heat it up, it can be a gas. What we do is we pour in here and we turn it on and you'll see something that happens. So these three types of water are a good but not perfect way to describe God. First, we have God the parent, the God that made us. Then we have God the Son, that's Jesus. God came to earth in, as Jesus and was solid and human, just like us. And then we have God the Holy Spirit. Do you see the steam coming out? Do you see how it's going up into the air and surrounding me? The Spirit is the same way. The Spirit is always around us. You can't necessarily see it, but... You can feel it. Have you ever been doing something and there's something inside you that says, go help that person? Have you ever stood up to someone when they were being mean or made a brand new friend? That is the spirit inside you. Does that help? Does that help you see how water can be all three things but still water and God can still be parent, son, and spirit and still be God? See, when you ask God to be in your life and in your heart, that spirit of God is always with you, surrounding and inside you, guiding you to help others, helping us make good choices and show people their love, comforting us when we're sad. God's spirit does so many things. I know this is a lot to understand, but if you remember one thing from what I'm saying, just remember that God is always with you, that God always loves us, and that's why we try to love others. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks so much, Aaron and kids, for being here. And, and y'all, we're going to begin to transition into a time of prayer. And so I, I invite you to, to bring to your mind those, those concerns and those joys and those hurts that are on your heart uh, so that here in just a moment we can bring them before God, knowing that God will receive them with tender hands. Friends, let's prepare ourselves in song.
from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me You pray with me. Holy God, we come before you today exactly as we are. Some of us with joy and thanksgiving, some of us with hurt and sorrow, all of us uh, a little bit broken. And God, we come hungry and thirsty for you and for your truth to be spoken anew into us, into the very depths of our hearts and our souls and our bodies and our minds, that, that we might be one with each other and one with you and your mission to the world. God, we pray this day in, in the aftermath of, of weeks, of months, of years, of violence in our world. We pray that your truth might transform us. We pray that your healing hand might be on all of those who have been affected by violence in our nation, and God, that we might be people who are changed and made new because of who you are, that we might be the bringers of your peace and your justice and your strength and your power to this world. God, help us to turn Help us to turn away from, from power over and to begin to walk into the truth that you have for us, that real power, real love is with one another. And so God, this day we ask that, that your spirit would be present in our midst, making us new helping us to lean in toward each other and toward you, God. Make us to be like Christ, like the one who, who taught us all of these things and how to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Dan, and I just so want to welcome you as we finish up our worship series about peddling through life, a journey of faith. I want to share a scripture with you. Uh, it comes from Matthew 16, verses 21 through 26, and I'm going to be reading from the message today. Hear these words. Then Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, that he was to submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders, be killed, and then on the third day be raised up alive. Peter took him in hand protesting, impossible master, that can never be. But Jesus didn't swerve. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Then Jesus went on, went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way to find yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade? for your soul. This is God's word for all of us as God's people and children. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, I just thank you and ask that uh, these words would abide on our hearts. And I pray that the words of my mouth and meditation of each and every one of our lives would be worthy in thy sight. Amen. You know, though we are com uh, kind of ending and completing our, our series on peddling through life or our journey of faith, each of us knows we know at our very being that the journey of life and faith doesn't end. It's an ongoing process. It continues. And one of the things I think we need to be asking ourselves is, how can I, and how can we as the church sustain? How can we live? How can I do? And how can we be the person, not only that I want to be, but who God wants me to be as I pedal as I journey in this life. What I want you to know and to think about is that this really is a series of faith questions for us. It's a faith question. It is a relationship question. It's a control question. And it's a question I think that should have us asking ourselves over and over again, who am I? Who am I? but also whose am I? Who do I follow? Who do I belong to? You know, as we began this journey a couple of weeks ago, we began talking about learning to ride a bike and that the first step was to take off the pedals. What that's really about is relinquishing the need to have power right away and that we need to learn to find balance find balance in the bicycle and in our faith journey we need to find balance we need to find balance that comes from uh, our knowledge and growth in our relationship with God that balance comes as we experience the love of Jesus in our lives right and come to know deeply and personally the truth that we're God's beloved that we are his I think about it in terms of the scripture that many of us have learned at young people from John 3, 16. For God so loved that he gave all that we might live, right? Now, the reality is that for far too many of us, we believe that initial knowledge of love of God and, and God's grace is enough. That's enough to sustain me to navigate on this incredible journey we're on. However, what I've learned is that so much of society and media and the business world kind of encourages us to believe that life is all about me, that you and I are the only ones who are really in control. 
So I brought in a unicycle to remind us that so many of us approach life with the thought that in, in order to be the person I want to be, I'm gonna use a lot of I words here, that I want to have to achieve the status I want, the job, the way of living, the relationships that I want, or I believe I deserve, is that we then just kind of take control and we pedal and pedal and pedal because if we stop, just as one would on a unicycle, we become fearful of falling or failing and that everything in life might come tumbling down or that the world might overwhelm us. So what do we do? We, we get on and we pedal and pedal and pedal. But I also wanted you to know that there are times in our life when our very being our spirits become powerfully and profoundly touched and connected with all that is holy, with God, with creation, with God's people. We're even reminded in scripture that we are commanded, I should say, to love God with our very being and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And in those experiences, that's, that's when we connect deeply. And when we have those, what we oftentimes call mountaintop experiences, life-transforming encounters with God, with all that is holy, we become energized. We're excited about this life of faith we have. Now, those things can happen in all kinds of places, camp or in a Bible study at a conference, maybe while you're on a mission trip, sometimes just in conversation with another person on the journey. Other times you experience and know that God has laid God's hands upon you to offer comfort and hope and healing and joy and, and peace, maybe in the quiet of prayer, and you discover that you are beloved. Now, it's in those moments of abiding in God and, and, and allowing God to abide in us and serving God's people that our lives can easily give, get revved up. And I shared some stories about my friend Todd. But what we must remember is that if we are not asking ourselves, so what am I gonna do in response to that experience, that moment, that feeling to how I have connected with our living and loving God and or God's people, then it simply becomes a fleeting moment. It's as if you've been on a 100 mile trip down the highway, maybe on a motorcycle or a bicycle with the wind blowing in your hair or revved up but as soon as we cut the motor off, turn off the engine, as we fall back into the regular routines and the normal aspects of our life and living, all that revving up, all that excitement, all that mountaintop experience simply becomes a powerful dynamic moment, a highlight in our lives. What can easily happen is we find ourselves then living for those moments. I want to live for this moment to the next moment, from that experience to the next one, hoping and believing that those experiences will be enough to sustain me in the in-between, to help me get through this journey, even as we, in our own lives, as well as in the life of the church and the community and the world, continues to face those bumps and potholes and roadblocks that I talked about last week. Those things that want to interrupt or prevent us from embracing and living into the path that God has called you to, me to, all of us to. Now friends, this journey of life and faith, when we approach it with a, a kind of a, a one and done, or I figured out balance, or I'm in control and I'm gonna keep pedaling so as I can move forward, and that those occasional moments that rev me up are simply enough to sustain me until I get to the next one. Now, I want you to know those moments, that kind of approach will keep you moving. They will. But if that's what you're relying on, then know that they will ultimately leave huge voids, emptiness, loss, maybe a sense of hopelessness, hopelessness because what happens is that we will find ourselves struggling so hard 
to keep momentum going, to figuring out the direction we're supposed to be going in, that we often feel as if we're trying to navigate this life all by ourselves. This journey of life and faith is not meant to be lived alone, all by ourselves. Rather, we, we as individuals and we as the church are invited into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We're invited to journey in faith with the one who loves us, who leads us by example, the one who promises to never leave us nor forsake us, who promises to be our shepherd and our guide, who claims us as beloved, who offers us life and life abundantly. For me, it's kind of like the image of riding a tandem bicycle. But here's the part that I think gets us stuck. There is a coordination that needs to take place on a tandem bicycle. And though we often say, Lord, I want to journey this life with you, we also want to include his statement, something to the effect of, Lord, I want to journey as long, as long as you take the back seat. Now, friends, we're